Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Snowflat Images, and in this video I'm looking at adding some external storage to my MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio that I use for editing these videos. Now, um, it's a fairly simple process uh, because I just found out things were, that I'd got external disks and that were old and a bit slow when it comes to editing video. So what I'm going to look at here is using this. And this is um, a Samsung Evo Plus 990. Uh, that is the actual memory card. That's four terabytes. That's quite fast one. It's a good quality one. Um, I picked up one of these relatively cheaply. Um, and also I got an enclosure to put it in because you need something to put the actual card in. And I'm just going to go through, show the setup of it and the difference it made. And a few other examples and things because it's something I use for editing these videos. Um, the SSD enclosure um, is a metal box. Oh, it's got a plastic case which does slide off. And um, essentially you uh, lever the top off um, and there's a, it's easy enough to do. And uh, you fit the card in, you put it back together again, but taking the heatsink, uh, um, there's a sticker on it which protects the heat sink tape that's on the side of it. These things get hot. Um, this during running, I've been testing it. Um, I've actually taken the main metal uh, drive out of the plastic case. It just slides out. Reason for that is it just improves heat transfer. Uh, generally electronics prefer not running very hot. Um, this stuff will run hot. There's nothing wrong with it. But um, you want to be careful because it could, if you've been using it much, run hot enough to actually sort of burn your um, it probably won't cause any damage, but you don't want to pick it up and uh, do that. So plastic case will be okay for carrying. Um, dead easy to set up. And I know that some people are a bit wary about memory modules and things like that and actually tinkering like this. So I've actually looked at it. So here's the device with the lid taken off. And all I'm going to do is just slot the card into it. Now, it's easy enough to do. Uh, take the card out, handle them relatively carefully, push it in. You can see I just slot it into that slot. Now just push the far end down and there's a little rubber tab on it that you just rotate. There we go, a little bit fiddly. Rotate that and that holds it in place. And that is it. That is all there is to, to actually fit it. Um, there's the tape. You have to remove that blue tape off the heat sink. Uh, just that just peels off so you get it there's a white bit underneath once you've done it pop it in there is at the end of the thing as a little latch which just hooks in the top the lid does and then you just push that in place and click it in place there are two little ball bearings on the thing that yeah spring loaded click and there we go that is the entire device um, it's quite a nifty device has its own usb 4 or thunderbolt lead inside it and you can actually just slide it forward and there we go there's the short lead now that's thunderbolt 4 lead so it can handle the speed of this um, it does come with a longer lead as well uh, which works just the same but this is convenient because um, it means i can put this in my bag and i don't have to remember to take um, a lead with me as long as I remembered to put the lead back inside this when I last did it. So there we go. That is it. It just has a USB-C socket uh, on it. You plug that in. There's a tiny little blue light that comes on when it's working. And that is all there is in setting it up. Now, how does it, how well does it actually work? Well, first of all, I plugged it, I tried it on this MacBook Pro and it'll be the same with um, PCs as well. Um, if you've got, so you need a fairly fast card, although you're unlikely to get the full speed of the card. This this on um, this one here says um, it's a PCIe 4 um, by 4 uh, 5 by 2 NVMe M2. You need that. I'll put the specs and notes into it, and I'll put a link to the Zyke uh, box as well. It's yeah, nice little thing. Um, that's the card for it. But it says on it, read speed up to, always words like up to, I always do a lot of heavy lifting, 7,250 megabytes per second. Well, that's assuming you've got stuff that can shove the data down that fast and it can go. Anyway, numbers like that. If you're really into stuff like this, you'll find stuff, loads of stuff on YouTube that goes into all the details, comparing different stuff and things like that. Does it work? Yes, it works. 
and that's the key thing here I was after. So anyway, that was installing it. I plug it in and immediately I get the disk you attach is not readable. Well, it needs initializing, so that's fair enough. So in terms of then, I've run the disk utility on the Mac. It spots it as a Samsung SSD 990 Evo plus 4 TB, 4 terabytes. That's a lot. I mean, I, I've been sorting out some old computers recently. And even for, you know, relatively four terabytes is still a lot. I know you can get far more capacity than that, but you don't need it. Uh, why do I want this one in particular? It's for uh, file transfers, big stuff between this and maybe my Mac Studio, but it's also for video editing. So I will have a look at the speed in a moment as well. But anyway, you just initialize it. It's fine. You give it a name, um, you set it up and, and that's it. It's set up and running as a disk. Now, the software I use to check the speed, um, it's a free download, it's Blackmagic's disk speed test uh, software. It's, I use DaVinci Resolve, which, which they make anyway. Um, so it's worth having a look at it to see what it will manage. So if I look at the internal drive, on this, and that's an SSD, but I think the problem with Macs is they're not upgradable. So I got, uh, I think it's a terabyte in here, which I got when I got the, you know, ordered one when I got the, uh, the computer, and you can't update it. My old Mac Pro that's humming away under the desk there is packed full of disks, and you can take them out and put extra disks in and all sorts of stuff. That's one bit I do miss a bit about replaceable storage. It goes for the studio as well. But anyway, running the disk speed test, I see here it comes in, and this is using just the internal on this, it comes in at a write and read speed of just over 4,000 megabytes a second. Well, that's, that's pretty fast. Um, I tested quite a few uh, options on this. Connecting this up to this, we see that drops. Well, that's more than fast enough for anything I'm likely to do. And the software does give you sort of indications of how fast you need, whether the disk you've got is fast enough to support editing on things. And this one goes right the way up to 12K, which I, yeah, I ain't shooting 12K, I ain't doing 8K. I'm not even doing 4K video for uh, YouTube stuff at the minute, maybe in a few years time when I get around to it, but no. Um, this is this works just fine on HD. Um, so does the external disk that I've got on the Mac Studio, but sometimes, it's a physical disk, so it's gone to sleep. And that 10 seconds waiting every so often for it to spin up. And we'll also see that the transfer speed of it is not that great, even though that's also on a USB 4 uh, connection. Um, or your, you know, Thunderbolt is on the Mac. But anyway, that was connected with that. Now, if I look at the Mac Studio disk, wow, that is write speed 6,000, read speed 5,000. That's fast, and you do notice it. Um, that's an older machine than this, but it's design, It's faster. It, this is a laptop after all. I mean, this is pretty fast, but yeah, it is just a laptop. But that's with that. Now, if I put the external disk, check it on that, yeah, it comes up at a whopping 260 megabytes a second. That's, yeah, it seems slow, but by the standards of other computers I've got, it's not that slow, really. It's okay for normal use, but for video editing, it's all right. It's there mainly for backup, for file storage, part of our backup system. There's a server, there's offsite backups, all sorts of things. So I've got stuff duplicated and things, but speed does matter sometimes. That's the um, external device. But if I put this via the daisy chain port on that device, although it's uh, Thunderbolt, it comes at 2000. So there's a drop from what I've seen on this and certainly the internal storage. However, if I connect it directly, it's back up to 3000. Um, and 3000 is reasonable enough for it. I say reasonable, it, it works on everything here. So there you've got it. Um, there's the basic device. The software itself is incredibly easy to use. This is the disk speed test. I mean, I just it just comes up with them. You just click on start and away it goes. And this is obviously, yeah, there we go. What do we got here? This is Reddit reading on the default without setting something else, just on the internal one here. Um, and that runs, you run it as long as you like, and then just, yeah, it'll give you some results there. Um, I'll put a link to this if I find it when I'm editing the uh, video so you can actually get the uh, speed disk test. Um, so there you go. Um, 
I'm sure there are many of these things available. This one was just good value. So was that. Really simple to set up. And there you go. Um, hope that's of use to somebody who's looking at increasing. Say, I said Mac storage could do for you know, PCs and things as well, but it just works. You know, plug that in, and I do like having the lead sort of stuffed down the side here. Obviously, I said it'd be longer lead as well, but that one means I'm not going to lose the lead. And you do have to be a bit careful. You can't just use any old USB 3 lead for it if you want the speed out of it. The speed, um, not all leads are the same. Uh, you put a, you know, a, a basic lead on this and the speed will plummet. But uh, there you have it. Um, something not quite the normal photography stuff, but definitely for this channel and for my general working as well. Um, yeah, I like that. Thanks for watching and bye.